started. Cool. So today's class, I've kind of called it a couple of different things. Uh, I, I've given it a jazzy name of um, digital door knocking because I think that's something that usually fills up my classes. So if I teased you with that one and you're here because of it, it worked. Um, but today what we're really going to talk about is the closest thing you can do digitally door knocking would be sending postcards. And what's really cool is we have a feature inside of uh, command that allows us to send postcards. Now, I don't know if you can tell, I'm really excited to teach this class because I love postcards. I have a marketing background. Uh, I enjoy social media. That's always been like my number one go-to thing for marketing. However, postcards have this really negative connotation of like, well, who, who looks at the mail anymore? Oh, no. Right? Postcards, blah. Uh, Let me tell you uh, something. Postcards are awesome. Um, especially during COVID, I would say in the last year, postcards became really, really effective. Some people, the only time they got out of their house was just to go check their mail. Right. Now, I'm saying some people, that was me. For a lot of it, like I look forward to that, that walk to the mailbox every single day just so that I can go look to see what I got. And I'll be honest with you, it was a lot more fun once the political season was over. Oh, dear so God. now is a good time, right? Um, so this is a great opportunity. And today we're going to focus on creating a, a postcard that we can send out through command. We're going to use the, the bait, the content, if you will, will be focused around a listing. However, just know that you can create these for literally anything you want. I'm just going to do a listing because it's going to be a little bit easier to teach class that way. Mm -hmm. However, if you're representing <clears throat> buyers and you want to reverse prospect buyers that you're working with in a particular area and then blast the postcard out that way, you can as well. You can do this for literally anything, just branding yourself and advertising it out. But today I'm just going to show you some of the cool features we have with listings. Um, but just know this isn't a, a, you know, a listings one and done thing. You don't have to have a listing for this to work. Cool. Hey, Sam, I have a question. Yes. Um, oh, yeah. Is this, uh, is this also being recorded? It is. Yeah, it came out a, a couple seconds late. Yeah, it's going to be recorded in, on my YouTube channel underneath the um, in-class recording playlist. Okay, it's being recorded. And how long is it going to run? Because I'm in another, I'm in another uh, conflicting uh, class right now. We will be out of here in under an hour. This will be under an hour. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'm, I'm going right. to log off right now and I'll, I'll check it out later. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks. Thanks, Andrea. Cool. All right. Look at that. I, I lost one already. <laughs> oh, and I just got one in. All right, here we go. All right, cool. Um, so I'm going to jump in first with, um, has there, anyone created a postcard before at, or has sent some type of mailing out to your database or in your farm in general? How's the experience gone, Miriam? It's been interesting. Okay, tell me more. What does interesting mean? You're muted. There for you guys. Are you sure you want me to? Yeah. I actually ended up uploading a postcard that I had previously created and used it to send it out that way. Okay. So you used a, a postcard you sent in the past and then you, you use command the second time around? Correct. I used command. I uploaded that card that was created in command rather than using one of the command um, templates, which is why I'm here so I can learn how to use the command templates for the postcard. Okay. Okay, cool. And can I'm, you use that there? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've used it, Sam. I, um, it's, fr it's a frustrating piece of software in terms <laughs> okay. of design. Tell me more. It's, I mean, I use Canva, I use Ripple. They're so user-friendly compared to this. There's a lot of little weird bugs, but I, I do love the templates. So I go keep coming back and then I take them and I print them somewhere else. Um, you, out of print, you print them because somewhere I, else or you send them somewhere else? I, I print them and then mail them. That's how I've been doing it. I print them, I take them out of there. I download it. I upload it somewhere else. Gotcha. Like to Canva or Vista or somewhere else to get them made. Okay. Yeah. I, I wasn't aware that there is, I don't know, maybe you're going to talk about today and that's kind of why I tuned in to see what else you can do. If I'd like to know how to send them digitally and I'd like to know how to print them in, have them printed out of command. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and uh, just to clarify, so the postcards that you had printed uh, from command, did you use those with your own sphere or was that like a geo farming? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. My own sphere. 
Cool. Today, today we're going to focus a little bit more on like the geo farming aspect of that because that tool is really, really cool. cool. Um, and this is the fun part where like I can talk smack on command and still be in culture at the same time. Yes, it is definitely hard to design print materials inside of command. The postcards are especially difficult. I hear you on that one. Um, full transparency, I was working on that for the last like hour leading up to class to prepare. It's tough. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with um, print marketing, it's very different than the online world. Um, you need to have a higher quality resolution of your photos. Because if you've ever received or if you sent something that was like blurry, it's because your images weren't um, high resolution. And then we also have this other aspect, which is called a bleed, which basically means that when we design something, it needs to be even a little bit larger because that design is going to be cut. It's going to be cut into the shape of your postcard. And then we have to essentially like do the math, the mathematics behind it to make sure that we're accounting for that cut. Uh, and that's called a bleed. So there's a lot of like little nuances with inside of print that makes it a little bit more challenging than usual. Now, from a design aspect, I would tell you there are two things that I use Canva for in my life. YouTube thumbnails, because I do a lot of those on my channel, and then also postcards. This is something that designs inside of command. They have really, really nice, beautiful templates, but managing the time to get those bleeds right does take a lot of time. So if you're familiar with a Canva or if you have a background in like publisher or something else and you're good at that stuff, feel free to use it. We can upload our own. Uh, designs inside of uh, the direct mail piece, which we're going to talk about today inside of campaigns. But I would say like, do whatever makes the most sense for you. You can kind of piecemeal this together inside of command and still make it work. Uh, but thanks for bringing that because that's something I wanted to address too. I want to be very transparent with all of you. There are some challenges when you start to go into the print game. Cool. All right. But let me show you this. So, so today's class, just for clarity, um, the reason why I like to use the term digital door knocking, because we can usually assume that when I'm door knocking, I don't know these people. When I'm printing something and I'm sending out to people that are already in my database, that's a little bit different than farming. Farming, the goal is to get in front of people to increase my database, to go after people that are outside of my world. Um, I would say if you're sending things to your database, use whatever makes the most sense to you. Um, there's even some ways that you can print your own uh, printing labels inside of command. But today's target market, if you will, is going to be a geographic space on the map that you decide. Now, this works best cases whenever you're doing like a just listed, a just sold, or a coming soon. Um, we're going to kind of go towards that path today. We're going to target people that we don't know. Cool. All right. So let's go ahead and jump right into command. And then I believe I have time afterwards today. So I will stop the recording when we're done through the main part of the session. And then if you have any questions around the other aspects of command and mail, I'll be more than happy to do that with you. All right. Oh, we got Tyler's baby still up there. Sorry, Tyler. Get that down now. Okay. A good postcard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. Uh, put your family in a postcard. Let's see what happens. Makes you seem more human. Cool. All right. So in command, Honestly, the, the first place you probably want to start, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time here, if you haven't done this already, you want to make sure that your marketing profile is complete. Now, your marketing profile feeds so many different things inside of command, including this postcard aspect that we have uh, inside of campaigns. But to quickly do this, I'm not going to go through it line by line, but we're going to click on your name and then go to settings. And then when you jump over to connect settings on the left, you'll see a spot here for marketing profile. So that was my name, settings. And then over on the left, I clicked on connect settings and then marketing profile. Now here, this is where you wanna update and upload your headshot, your team logo if you have one, your contact information your bio, your telephone number, all of the brokerage information for the office you belong to, and including a legal footer here as well. That's all good stuff. But you're gonna to wanna to fill this thing out to your best of your ability and just hit save. What command does is it constantly pulls things from this page so that it makes it a little bit easier that whenever we go to create a, um, a flyer or a, a postcard, you'll see that my information's already pre-filled. I don't have to do this again. Cool. Now, we're going to jump straight into campaigns 
And for those of you who are unfamiliar with the icons, that is the uh, megaphone or bullhorn over here. And you can always click this red KW up here in the top left that expands the tools. We're going to jump into campaigns. Now, campaigns is awesome. Um, this one tool inside of command allows you, whenever I click create a new campaign, to do Facebook, Instagram, Twitter ads, Google ads, just post to my social media, direct email. So this is like a replacement to like a constant contact or uh, MailChimp. I'm actually going to teach on that class tomorrow at 1.30. And then direct mail is the one we're going to spend our time in today. So if you're going to do this along with me, we're going to click the direct mail button. And it's going to pull up this screen right here that says, hey, it's a new campaign. What are we going to do? Now, the first thing you have to do is you have to name it. So uh, I'm going to do a test one today for this property. So I'm going to type in uh, 2510 Benefeld, not sure how that's pronounced. Now, the next thing I have to do is pick my goal. This does not matter what you choose for uh, postcards. This is um, just kind of, we're using the same user interface to use a technology word that we use for like Facebook and Twitter and the, and the others. Uh, it doesn't matter what you click here. I could click attract talent. It's not going to change anything moving forward, but you do have to pick a goal. It's going to stop me if I don't. And then you have the choice. Uh, today, we're going to use a default template because these are the ones that work well for me when I'm teaching class. Uh, however, you can upload a custom template. Now, this is if you wanted to go create one inside of designs, inside of command. If you're using Canva or Photoshop or Publisher, you could click on upload a custom template. And when I hit sub campaign, it's going to have me upload that file. Now, I'm going to hit back and do that again real quick because we're going to use the pre-created ones inside of command. All right. Yeah, it doesn't matter what I pick, but we're going to use a default template inside of command. Now, when I, when I do this, I'm going to hit set up campaign. And it's going to take me to fill out the rest of the information. We're basically going to tell command, here's the info. It's going to create a postcard for us on the right. Now, I minimize this just to show you. These are all the things that we need to do. Step number one, we have our name and goal. Number two is we have to put our listing details in. Uh, then we're going to put a photo, agent information, brokerage information, and then we're going to move on to targeting. But take a look at this. Number one is listing details. If I'm advertising a listing, I can put this address in pretty easily and put in 2510 Benefield, F I E L D. Road. We can put in a price in, and I'm just grabbing one of our listings. All right, someone's price. And yeah, why isn't it pulling up the address as you started typing it? Uh, it will not here, but it will verify me later. And part of this is we're going to use a different type of geo tracking inside of uh, Command. Yeah, but it doesn't it doesn't pull you this time. Uh, however, I'm sorry, I missed a step. You could select a listing. I skipped over that button. If you do have a listing, you could pick that. Here, let me go back a second here. Yeah, if you if this is your listing or if it's a listing active inside of KW, oops, you can click on select listing. And one of the things that you'll want to see here on the screen, um, this isn't my listing, so it's not going to show up on your mind. So I can change this from only mine to all. And you also may want to double check that if this one is something that you just recently sold, you may have to change the status from active to whatever makes sense. You can also just do all statuses. Now, when, whenever I have these two filters set up to the way I want them to work, now all I have to do is type in the address and hit search. And now it's going to pull up that property for me. And then now when I hit select, a lot of this should be pre-filled for me. So just like that, it pulled in the address, the list price, uh, listing status, I can change to coming soon. Uh, I'm not sure why it does have the information for beds and baths, but it still makes me put that in. It's probably good to verify that anyways. This one's a four and a three. So I can change that here. And then um, I went over my character limit. 
on my description. So now you just want to make sure that you're below 350 characters. You can see your count down here. Um, and less is more. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete probably a lot. And if this is a coming soon, I may just kind of end that with a cliffhanger, like um, not expected to be on the market long. No, no, don't put that. Oh, dear God. Sorry, can you tell that that's what we keep seeing is like, it's not going to last long. Yeah, I know. Um, I get to wear my realtor hat very, um, not very often. So I'm going to do it today. Yeah, call me now. Um, again, be a lot more creative than I am. Thanks, Marianne, for calling me out on that one. <laughs> but again, you can just uh, make sure you're not hitting that 350 character limit. There's definitely a spot that we need to fit that information in. I'm gonna, and then I'm going to hit save. So this information is correct for my listing. Uh, hit save. We're good to go there. Now we're going to move on to listing photo. Now take a look at this. I have listing photos here. Where do you think these pulled from? MLS or KWLS, the okay. listing. Yeah, itself. the MLS or an MLS. What do you think is going to happen if I try to print this photo? Yuck. It's going to yell at me, low resolution. And that's because we're taking something that was originally on the web, a website, and it's not a high enough resolution for print. Whenever you print something, it's always best that you have the original photos or a very high resolution photo. So although this is really cool and handy, it's not gonna help us a whole lot. What you're gonna to wanna to do is click this plus sign down here in the bottom right and upload your original photo. Now, hopefully, Y'all have these images somewhere in your computer from your photographer, or you have them somewhere. I'm going to go in and pull just the house that I have photos from. Um, there we go. So I'm grabbing a high resolution original photo. And when I click and select it, I'll see it up here, here. I'm not getting yelled at because this is a high resolution photo. This is like the original copy. So now if I were to continue, uh, this is a high enough quality for print. I won't get in trouble there. But make sure that you're always um, using a high resolution. Otherwise, when you go to print this, you go to send it out. It's going to be really, really blurry and uh, kind of hard to see. But I picked my photo now. I'm going to hit save. Now I need to fill out my information as an agent. This all fed directly from that marketing profile that we looked at pretty quickly. So nothing to worry about here. I can hit save. Um, you may want to upload, again, your higher resolution, your original photo. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my newest headshot because I know it's ready for print. Now, I look square and funny. We'll see what that looks like inside of my, my preview, but I think it's going to be okay for now. Going to hit, uh, maybe let's hit adjust cropping just to make sure I don't look weird. Yep, that looks good. Hit save. Now I need to go to the market center. This is just going to confirm your office information already. Um, my logo's there. I got some mixed matched offices, but let me just go ahead and put that in. But this should be the brokerage. This should be your office account or address. And this will verify the address when I click here. It's going to pull up Google. It's going to make sure that I have the right address. Now, here's the thing. These last two boxes for targeting and budget, you technically don't have to do anything here. If you wanted to, I can come in here and say, okay, um, here's where I'm looking to target. So this is the address, 2510 Benefield. I can hit save. And if I want to make my budget, let's just say I don't want to spend more than, I don't know, a certain amount, I can change this in any direction that I want to. But honestly, on the next screen, this is where you can get really finite with what is we're going to do here. I wouldn't stress about targeting a budget because we're going to do all of that really smartly on the next screen. But I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And then the last couple of things you can do here is you can see that we have through uh, real mailers, four different templates that are pre-built inside of a command. They don't require any graphic design work from you. Um, so if you're okay with these, they're perfect. It takes you no time to create these from a design aspect. If you're more creative and you want to put your own personal touch, 
that's where going into like a Canva or like a, a publisher or something like that um, can be done. But if you're cool with like this template, like I like this second one, totally works for me. Now that has a picture of a palm tree. It's going to be replaced with the image that I put in there, but I like the look. I dig it. So that one would be fine with me. I'm not going to need to do any graphic design work. But notice there is a difference here. Um, this one's a six by nine. This one here is a four by six. And then we have two of the jumbo is a uh, six and 11 or six by 11. There's a modern and a contemporary. So you have four different choices and different sizes as well. If you prefer a certain size um, um, postcard, but just know that the price will increase. So if I pick the six by nine, this is now gonna cost me 79 cents or 99 cents if I decided to send it first class. If I choose a four by six, that's now gonna cost me 59 cents. And I believe these are like a dollar 11, 89, 89 cents for those two. So depending on the size, you know, your cost is gonna increase there, but let's just do the six by nine. And I would send it maybe first class if you're promoting something like a coming soon, or um, if you're really, really ambitious and you're going to send a postcard out for an open house, you probably wanna make sure that's sent first, first class. Cool, any questions on this so far? Does it look really, really easy or is this a little bit overwhelming? Kim's giving me a thumbs up, okay. So far, so good. Okay. okay. All right, it's meant to be easy. That, that's the goal here. So if we're, we're stuck on something, let me know. All right, now here's the thing where we can throw in a layer of complication. Um, you will see that I have one more box down here in the bottom right to where I can include QR codes for tracking. Now, this is how we make postcards really, really smart. If you wanted to, you could use the consumer applet inside of command to create a landing page that people could scan and go to from your postcard. Now, what that would look like, let me just turn tracking on. Now, I have really old um, landing pages in here, but let me just grab one that has an address on it. Now that I have tracking on, if I were to look at my postcard preview up here in the top right, there's the front. Cool contemporary look, has my address. Uh, all the information was pulled from command. Use my photo. On the back, my information. And that extra piece where we did the QR tracking is where this QR code comes in. Now, if somebody were to scan that, that would take you to a landing page for that property if you took the time to do it. This is how you make it really, really smart. This is like next level marketing if you were to do something like that. Not required. I can come down here, turn off QR tracking. And then now when I look at my postcard again, it's gonna look identical just without that QR code. So if you wanna take the extra step and track how many people are scanning your QR code, that's a cool feature. That's how you make this really, really smart. Cool. All right, any questions? Cause we're gonna move on to my favorite part of this whole thing. This is where it gets really, really smart. Hey, Sam. Yes, hey, Stella. Hey, hey, how are you? Great. So if you add this QR code, is that like an additional, um, uh, do you have to pay for it or just your code that you actually? No, there is no additional cost for that QR code. It's just, it's just you unlocking another level of tracking how many people took the extra step to scan that QR code on their smartphone. Can I ask you a question? So who asked that question? Hey, Sam, so the only yeah, option, sorry. Sam, that's it. sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> When I select the QR code, it gives me two options, like about me and something or other. Are those already built into my, um, you know, my configuration or my profile? Yeah, let me let me see if this is a draft real quick. I'll show you where those are. Okay. A lot of information being uh, saved here. We'll let that ride. Was there another question while we're letting that go? Are you going to actually show us now where to pull up the QR code, Sam? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to show you how to create those, okay. uh, those landing pages. Yeah, okay. all right, just to make sure that's saved. Okay, so if you want to create a landing page, if you really want to get ahead of the game, um, you'll go into consumer, which is normally where we do our websites.
Now, I have spent a lot of time, a couple of years now training on command. So I have a lot in here. You probably won't have that much, uh, including landing pages, which is the tab where all of my stuff pulled from. Um, these are relatively simple. They're pretty easy to make. Um, but what you'll do is just click this create a new page button over here on the right. And you'll click a landing page. It's the second choice here on the bottom. And a landing page, for those who aren't familiar with this term, it's basically creating a, a single website, a single focal point of your website that doesn't actually live anywhere else. The only way to get to this landing page is if like you were to you know, create a link for it or if somebody were to scan it like a QR code and you direct them there. But this thing doesn't otherwise exist anywhere else. It's not attached to your actual website, your, you know, your stable website. It's just something that you can use to kind of one up your marketing. So I'm going to create a simple landing page real quick. Just going to hit create. And this is where if I was advertising uh, 2510 Benefield, I can create this here. So just name it 2510 Benefield. Now I'm going to make this really, really simple, but basically you're going to drag in these widgets as we call them over on the right. And um, for those of you who intend to do this, I always recommend build them from the bottom up. And what I'm doing on this screen is building a website. Now, I like to not overcomplicate and overthink things, but when I look at a website, I know that there's usually a simple format to those. There's usually, it's, it's almost like whenever you went to, to high school or college and they told you how to write a paperwork or write you know, a, an essay, you have a heading at the top, you have a content in the bottom, and then you have some type of close that at the, at the, at the end. So I'm going to reverse build that. I'm going to start at the bottom. I'm going to put in a footer because that's what goes on the bottom of a page. So I'm going to drag and drop that. I personally would always include a lead form right above that. I want people to put contact information in. And then the last two things I need to do is put my header and what I call my meat and potatoes. What's the content? So if I'm advertising a listing, I'm gonna grab this listing widget, move it over to where the green bar is above, let that go. And don't worry that it says Hilltop in Texas, don't worry about that yet. And then lastly, the last, the fourth thing on my website is a header. And that's just this branded header widget that's on the right. I'm gonna drag it, I'm gonna see that up top. So it pulls in my information again from that marketing profile. Now my website is complete, the layout is complete. I have a header, my meat and potatoes. This is my, my listing. If I scroll down, I have my contact form and then my legal footer, which keeps me in compliance. Now, this is a two-step process. We built the layout. Now we need to click on configure widgets and this will let me change that information around. So if I click on branded header, that looks good. If I want to put some information in here, I could. Um, type in thanks for visiting. Or you could even type this out and be in theme with your um, postcard and say coming soon. And when I hit save and apply, you'll now see that coming soon is up here. Now I just need to finish my website and then click on the arrow to go to number two, which is my listing. So same as before, I'm gonna click browse. It's gonna pull pretty much the exact same screen. So now I'm gonna type in 2510, search for my listing. There it is right there, hit select. And then now when I hit save and apply, you'll see where it says 300 Hilltop, this will get replaced with my listing. And then if I wanted to, I can come down here and actually change where this says interested, let's talk for my contact form. I just click the arrow to move to the next one. And I can say, um, get info before it's live or something to that effect. I'm out of creativity today, but hit save and apply, save and apply. Now when I scroll down and see my contact form, it's there. And then if I wanted to, I could change something, or actually I don't think I can change anything on my legal footer, but if you see an error with like your links or anything like that, your logos, you shouldn't have to touch this one. I can hit save and apply and that's done. So now when I publish page, in the top right, this is now 
a landing page. This is a live active website. Now, if you wanna see what that looks like, I'm gonna click on landing pages. You'll see 2510 Benefield. When I click on this, this is what we just created. Now, normally you wouldn't wanna put in language that says coming soon on your actual website. However, this because this is a standalone single use landing page, I can use it for something like a postcard. Now, if I were to jump back to command now and go all the way back to my postcard, inside of campaigns, back to direct mail up here in the top. I can go back to the draft I was working on. And I should have that as a choice now that I can pull up that landing page. So if I go back to tracking, turn that on, I should see, it's probably all at the bottom, but if I can type in and search 2510, That's now there. So if I were to open up my preview, if any of you were to scan that little QR code right there, it would take you to my landing page. Cool. Awesome. Now, kick me out. So let me go ahead and save that. Go ahead while you have a question. Oh, no, I'm excited about it. It looks good. Yeah, cool. Very cool. So if you wanted to provide that link to the landing page to someone. Yeah, oh yeah, I can, you can use this for anything. I can copy this right now and go paste it on Facebook. Okay. Yep. Yeah, landing pages are pretty cool. Um, I, I had this conversation earlier with an agent. Um, what's really cool about these is that a lot of times you don't need to recreate them. Um, this was particularly helpful because I wanted to include this information that says coming soon. However, you will see this website already exists. There's already a, a spot that I could pull this information from inside of my KW command website. It's actually a little bit cooler. There's a little more features inside of my website. So if you were to just go to your command website, like mine, samjackson.kw and type in that same address, I will spell this right today at one point, I promise. I could share this link on Facebook and it wouldn't require me any work. Sam, can you use that QR code to something outside of command, a landing page outside or a, um, like even a YouTube video? Could you use that? Yeah, so so typically the way QR codes work is that you just have to have a website. Okay. So in this case, I could take this same link right here. Right. Copy this. And then if you just go to Google and search uh, QR generator. Okay, okay. Um, there, there's a ton of free resources. I, I never pay for them. There's too many of them that are free. Um, all you need is a link. Paste that same landing page in, and then now I have a oh, QR code that I can save oh and put gosh, that anywhere. Thank you. Perfect. Yeah. Um, I, today's goal was not to talk about landing pages no, more so than than uh, than mail, but I would say this is a really good tactic for those of you who are doing uh, open houses. Mm -hmm. You could create a landing page that is basically just that login widget or that um, contact information widget and then put a QR code that way their people scan that when they come to your open house instead of touching a pen during COVID. Cool. Great questions. I appreciate that, everyone. I'm willing to chase rabbits and go down these rabbit holes if y'all are uh, going to implement it. These are some really cool features in command that can change your world. All right. But yeah, now that we have tracking on, I can take a look at my postcard one last time. The back looks great. I got my QR code. If you were to scan that, it, it would take you to my landing page. The front looks pretty sharp, has my, uh, my photo up there. And this is the next part that gets me really fired up. Step number two is I'm gonna click on configure targeting. Now it's gonna give me this warning. I'm not sure why, like this is all the way it's supposed to go, but I'm gonna click yes. I do wanna create this campaign. 
It's going to take a second because we're going to load up some really cool information in here. So it's going to take you to a map. Now, what's going to do is it's going to take the address of the listing and it's going to be your epicenter. It's going to be this little red icon right here that tells you, hey, we're dropping that pin right on the map. And if you remember, I decided that I was going to target 222 homes. Now, this is why I tell you it doesn't matter because on this screen, I can just increase this. I can now go to 728 and you can kind of tell there's a circle now. My pin, my address is the middle. And then I can make that as large or as small as I want to. It's going to just target and advertise the closest 120 homes uh, around my listing. And what's cool is as I do that, you'll see that my cost is calculated down here. Because I chose the, um, the secondary uh, postcard, I think the what, the four by six, it's what, 80 cents or 79 cents uh, a postcard. So it's calculating that out based on the number of houses I target. So you'll know before I hit next, how many, how much it's gonna cost me. And that's strictly the mailing cost. Right? Everything, that's your total cost. So the mailing cost and what else? Uh, so they're gonna print it. So there's no, there's no additional like printing fee. Uh, and it includes your postage. That is like, it's gonna cost me 297 just to hit next. It's gonna go out to 300 homes. Total cost. That's amazing. Oh, just wait. It's going to get better. <laughs> yeah. Are you that's, saying that's just automated? based on, we said 300 homes. Automated? Who, who's the day that's going to print it? Yeah. So we use, a, there's a company behind the scenes called Real Mailers. And for those of you who aren't familiar with them, they kind of work like a, a 1-800-Flowers. And what I mean by that is they're a national company. So we're able to get national rates. That's why it's costing us 80 cents to send a, a you know, a, a higher end uh, postcard. Um, however, what they do is they contract local printers. So the, they'll contact a local printer. And then whenever this postcard goes out, it will go through an Atlanta based um, post office. There will be nothing in here that says it was stamped and sent from Denver. It's all going to look and feel like it came from locally because it is. So real mailers contracts local printers like 1-800-Flowers contracts local florists. So as agents, do we ever touch the postcard? You can. So you'll see that there is a box down here that says send copy to my company address. So it would be sent to the office. Before it goes out or? Before it goes out. Uh, no, with, 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 the, with the order. So that, that is the one downside if you are used to working with a, uh, like your own printing company, is there is no proof. Um, however, this company is awesome. We've had zero complaints with them and we've been using this for three years now. But Sam, you'll have a digital proof. You proof it digitally. You look yeah. on. Oh yeah, when I, when I hit the next screen. Yeah, you, yeah, I'll show you that. But yeah, yeah, you won't have a physical proof until it's out to everybody. Yeah, oops, scroll too far. But let's, let's take a look at this too because I want to show you something really cool. One of the most common mistakes I see and not from anyone in this room, obviously, is that agents who have never sent a postcard before, they get really excited and they say, I'm gonna send a postcard out. It's going to be awesome. I'm gonna to send to the 300 homes. I'm definitely gonna get business from that. It's like, to use a baseball analogy, I don't like to use sports all the time, but to use the baseball analogy, it's like having that one batter on a baseball team that either strikes out or hits home runs. There is no middle ground. Um, and a lot of times those guys have more strikeouts than they do home runs because they're swinging really, really hard one time. The goal with this is I would encourage you is that we can go through and change some of this stuff around. I'll show you that in a second. But you probably want to create a target small enough to where you can send and afford to send this postcard out multiple times. Because we know that at least by sending it once a quarter, four times a year, you have a better chance of getting business to these 64 people four times than trying to send to 500 people once or a thousand people once. The goal here is that you can afford this so that you can easily duplicate this campaign and send it to people more than one time. They get familiar with the name, they see your mail more than once, we stick that way. Questions, comments on this? Then I'm gonna get really nerdy on y'all. See, right now I go into the tax records, I pull up the streets, I print the labels. 
This is like so much more efficient. Yes, efficient. However, what you did is also really valuable um, because we don't get the addresses. Like these, unfortunately, don't go right into our database. That's exactly yeah. what um, I was getting ready to ask. <laughs> what purposes does it load into command? So it sounds like <laughs> it doesn't. It does. It does not. However, if I were to send this off or just hit save for this point, I could come in and resend it to the same group really easily. The only downside is that um, I don't get to save that information. Like I don't get these addresses in here. They don't hit my command, but I could resend it. No problem. Um, since my mouse is there. They're not <clears throat> contacts yet. Right. They're not right? contacts. So they're, well, they are our addresses. Yep. And let's take a look at this. So if you were to pull up your own neighborhood and you want to send to your own neighborhood, you could remove a house. So let's just say that house you know is currently listed by another brokerage, I could remove it. Let's say that I know that there's a real estate agent that lives at this house, I could go ahead and remove it. Guess what? I just save what, $1.60 by doing that? Kind of cool. Well, you can also exclude houses that were just sold within so many. Yes, my favorite feature, so yeah. All these different options here with all these little circles and lines on the left side with these red red lines yep. are fantastic. So so who mentioned that they, they did the tax records? Kim Thompson. Oh, Kim, yeah. So, so this is a really cool thing too, is that we are looking at the tax records. That's how we have this information. Like it's all public. We can take a look at the last year sold and instead of blanket marketing to 213 people, I can now say, okay, NAR tells us the people move every 10 years now. So maybe I'm just going to go all the way back to, let's just go 2011 and exclude those people. So now I'm still targeting 213 people, but this is a much larger circle than it was before. Or if I just zoom in, I don't want to go that far. I could just get really small here. I could change my, my radius here, which is pretty cool. Um, if you want to increase your price point, take a look at this one, last sold for. Maybe I don't want to sell anything below 500,000. Now I'm only looking at 500 to, two, or to 20 million. And now look how big my radius got. That's, that is really one of my big questions because we border like million dollar homes and they're not going to care, honestly. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. About neighborhoods that sold for, you know, a fraction of, they're going to care about comparables. Yeah. They yeah, go the other way. I, that's I don't awesome. Wanna... So that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So if I don't want to send it to the million dollar houses, I can do it the other way. Here's yeah. zero to 722. Um, is there anyone that specializes in uh, antique homes or antique? What's the what's the word I'm looking for? Historical homes? You know, we have a few agents in our world that do. I, I know, I'm asking the wrong question. In, in Pittsburgh, where I'm from, this was a big deal. We had a lot of special uh, specialist agents that worked specifically on 18, uh, 1800 homes. So like what we could do is just mark this down to like homes built in before like 1933. Um, this is really going to probably break now because we're in Atlanta and everything's new. Um, but we had agents who specialized as historical home agents. That was their niche. Uh, they had a way to just only send it to those homes, which is cool too, because then you can create a postcard that talks to you about being the specialist uh, for a certain um, style. And then you can do that. That's Look awesome. at how there are, Sam, more than you thought. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I moved it too quickly for it to tell me, but yeah. It looks like we went to 250, but we went pretty far away. Seems to be a lot over there in Sugar Hill. In town, you'd find a bunch like the down in the bucket, North Buckhead and stuff. You'd find a bunch down there too. Yeah. Now, here's another cool thing. Actually, two, two really, really cool things. If there's anyone that focuses on, um, let's say, first-time home buyers, let me reset all of my things here really quickly. I could also target multifamily homes. There's your apartments and condos. Clusters of townhouses, multifamilies, apartments, all in here. 
I can go send it out to them. I can create a postcard that's all based on me being the first or the uh, first time home buyer specialist. Pretty neat. So you, you can bounce back between single family, multifamily, or all. So if you are focusing on single family, you probably just want to make sure that you're selected on single family. And then here's my favorite thing. It doesn't have to be just where my, my listing is. That's where it moved it. If I wanted to, I could draw and target a specific neighborhood if I wanted to. So this um, icon up here, it's called the polygon tool. If I wanted to target just this one subdivision or heck, this one cul-de-sac, I could. There is no minimum from real mailers. You could literally draw a polygon around one house and they will still send it at the same cost that they quoted you. That's awesome, awesome. So there's eight homes here. If I really want to target these eight homes, it would cost me $8. I could send them a postcard every week at that rate. Do you think these eight people would probably use me at some point if they're getting mail from me literally every week? Probably. Now, that's a little bit of an extreme case. You probably want to market yourself to more than eight people. But this is really, really cool that you could get really specific. And I could say, um, I don't actually know the name of the subdivision. Um, Blackstock Mill. I could put on my postcard, attention Blackstock Mill neighbors. Sorry, my mouse is going a little bit crazy. Just to make sure that I'm only advertising to them, I'm just going to map out the subdivision. I want to cut it short here. And at this point, oh, come on, click. I'm stuck in limbo on the clicks. Enter, Does that work? All right, let me recenter. Not sure what happened there. <laughs> Make sure you hit your buttons the right way. There we go. Got it just right that time. Okay. So what's cool is that even though that I had said I wanted to advertise to 250 homes, um, inside of my, my shape, there's only 169 before I filter. So then if I want to do the same thing, go down here and do, all right, 2011. Now there's only 85 homes. I just got rid of nearly half the homes that have moved in the last 10 years. And now it's gonna cost me $84. I could spend that every quarter, no problem. These people can get mail from me four times a year. Kind of a cool thing. Any questions on this before we finalize sending it so you guys can see what that screen looks like. And you can't change standard and first class here as well. Sam, any push on uh, command to uh, add more templates, do you think? Is that coming more and more like the, the standard on the slide? Unfortunately, those standard ones are from real mailers. That's why they oh, work so well. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if there's anything that we can do with those. Um, I will say that's where, like, if you want to get more creative, um, Canva is really good. Even, even designs inside of commands, great. You just got to take the time to figure out the bleeds with it. It's, it's frustrating. Um, but yeah, and unfortunately, I think we only have those, what, four or five in there. Okay, but let me go ahead and hit next. And this is where you'll get your proof. So this is, again, another preview. If you didn't look at it before, it's going to pull up your, your last preview. Eventually. Front and back, has my description, QR code, price, all that jazz. And then the last thing I have to do is put in my, my credit card information and it will go directly to real mailers is what your, your charge will be. Now there is some information down here that is important. So again, it confirms how many postcards at the rate. So I'm sending it first class, so it became 99 cents. Same day processing, so it will go out so as long as you do it before 3 p.m. And then it takes two business days Estimated delivery, four to six. So again, if you're doing something like an open house, you definitely want to do first class and you want to plan probably a week ahead. If you're doing just like a just listed, just sold, up to you if you're doing standard first class, just depends on your urgency on when you want to get it out. 
And then hopefully y'all don't need me to put my credit card information in front of y'all. You trust the process, but basically you just put in your email, your credit card information, hit make a payment and it goes out the door. What do y'all think? Awesome. I love it. Love it. Cool. Now, I will challenge y'all. This is where it's really great to maybe get some co-op money. If y'all have really great partners with lenders or somebody else in your world, I have seen some of our top agents get their costs even further reduced because they'll include their mortgage rep on their postcards. Now, I'm not a RESPA um, uh, attorney or whatever you're going to call it on here, specialist. <laughs> Make sure you're in line with RESPA. But yeah, there's some opportunities that you can even bring your costs down. Um, let, your, let your vendor partners know what it is you're doing and if they want to be a part of it. You might even be able to bring that cost down even further. But I'm not going to complain. $84, if I send that out every four months, I'm happy. Is that just to put their logo and name on it? Uh, I don't think I can answer that one, but typically it's contact information and maybe it's some other things they need to for compliance with RESPO. Okay. Yeah. There's a whole other world when you start including vendor partners on there, but they can help cover costs. Cool. All right. So um, just to sum up everything, again, it's really easy for us to talk about um, a listing today that's a good material to, to use for this. Um, you could easily put a custom photo up here that has nothing to do with a listing. It could be, hey, I have, you know, 10 buyers who are looking to move to this, this community. Um, you could put like stock photography on the front of here instead of a house. Or, or whatever, just make sure that um, you have high quality and that you own the rights to use the photos. Cool. Any questions? So the photo and address doesn't have to match. It's just an advertising, I get. Correct. Yeah, and in fact, you can kind of delete some of that out or Joyce, um, yeah, let me do this real quick. Um, I'm, I'm too far. Um, if you ever want to trick technology, you know, like whenever I go to type in the address, if I were to leave that blank, it would, um, it would force you to put something in there. If you hit the space key on your computer, the computer recognizes as a character, but yet nothing shows up. So if you ever want to fake or cheat something inside of tech, just put a space bar. You can usually trick most systems that way. That also helps on DocuSign. <laughs> oh. So beyond this, the, this company, do they just do postcards? Or will, do you think anything else is coming down the line print-wise, like, say, a letter? Yeah, here, let me... I'll